Hi folks, let's continue from last week's Fusion 360 CAD and CAM tutorial and we're going to machine that split clamp for the Tormach spindle nose and we're going to put the mystery tool in it and see how it works. So what is the mystery tool? It's actually not really a mystery for those that follow the channel. It's the inexpensive uh, pneumatic engraver that we picked up from Harbor Freight. We're building a whole dedicated machine for this thing and a lot of you folks have asked, there's a link here, uh, a lot of folks have asked where is that? We haven't forgotten about it. The y-axis was, was no good. We're rebuilding it. I want to nail that down. Then we'll do the sort of final video on that. But it should be a fun machine because it'll be a relatively inexpensive standalone engraving machine that we can use as like a dedicated machine for certain parts and things that we do. But I thought there's still no reason you can't put this in the Tormach. And this is a, just a very different way to engrave. And I think I'm going to do a whole different video on engraving be, uh, with spindle engraving with turning tools. but. This pneumatic thing should be fun. So let's go ahead and run the vice op and then the fixture op, talk about sort of how we machine it, speeds and feeds, fixturing setup, indicating, part in, all that fun stuff, folks. Welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. The only material I have on hand is eight inch, uh, thick, eight inch wide material. So we're gonna use the DeWalt saw with that little fixture plate we made. Folks have asked about that as well. I like it, but I don't love it. We're gonna redo it and, and then do a video on how we made it. We may even make some of the parts available for folks that are interested, but we love this saw. Be safe with it. We're using these can't twist clamps here, which is really important. But what's great is we can actually not only cut it to length, but we can flip the part around and trim it down from eight inches to five inches and save a piece of aluminum and prevent having to you know, machine all that material away. Then we'll stick it in the Tormach vise with a two, four, six block just to help give it some rigidity in those in the jaws so it doesn't chatter around and just clean off the surface so that it'll hold nice and snug in uh, in the vise here all right let's find our zero just approximate here touch screen uh, is what makes that great so left edge negative five inches go back to continuous again doesn't have to be perfect this will be positive 2.5 on the Y. And make sure we're on tool 99. Z0. And if we take a look, There we go, we're just about perfectly in the center of the part, which is exactly what I wanted. First off is the Superfly. This is an aggressive cutter, and on any sort of wide material, we may have some chatter. One way to tell is, when we knock down in the center there, that feels pretty darn solid. So I think this is gonna be okay. Let's find out. We're going 4,000 RPMs, 20 inches a minute on the ramp in, and we jump up to 40 on the actual cut. We're getting, I would say, not chatter so much as a harmonic vibration. That's gone now. Should jump up to 40 here in a second, because it's done plunging in. There we go. Awesome. If you haven't seen it, we did a video on our Superfly. We're moving six cubic inches a minute. I've actually been tweaking the speeds and fees. We also just got the new Tormach tool compatible Superfly, which I'm gonna do a video on. It's only 0.75 inch diameter tool, which is fine. Uh, we're still using the one inch here. Sweet. You can see when you use the helical ramp in like this, you're it's so much easier on everything, on the machine and its rigidity, on the tool, on the material, the workpiece. And uh, it's not as fast as drilling, but I don't want to put a drill in here and uh, it's, not, it's, you know, it's up to you. 
Um, you also notice we've got the part a little bit shifted a little bit to the left. That's because when we were super flying this, I wanted more of that in the uh, in the actual vice jaws and not having it too far to the left because I wanted to minimize the risk that we'd have chatter. One of the reasons I wanted to throw in some GoPro footage of Path Pilot is. Um, mostly to show off the touchscreen. It's such a game changer for me. I'm so glad that Tormach has it and it's got it working. I just can't even tell you. It stops me from using the mouse. It gives me, it's safer, it's faster. It just makes it more fun to use the machine. I use it a ton for the um, step increments for starting the program. And then just the usual stuff about Pathpilot like you couldn't do in Mach, which I still love, which is you've got the GUI, you can mess around with it. It's not gonna hurt anything. You can in increase this, close this, you can unplug a USB stick. It's kind of nice. Come back and then clean up, <laughs> clean up that Superfly, or not Superfly, the Shearhog finish, but honestly folks, it leaves a spectacularly good finish for a tool that's not intended to be any sort of a finishing tool. And finally, this is how we're going to indicate the part in a minute when we throw it into the fixture plate. I ended up adding a, uh, a roughing op so that way when I'm cutting the finish pass on this, I'm not slotting, but rather only cleaning up 10 or 20 foul on that face. All right, out she comes. Give it a quick deburr. Oop. I mean, we can tell now, will it fit? Ooh, uh, oh yeah, look at that folks. <laughs> that's awesome. A little bit of play, that's okay. It's gonna clamp down, but still, gotta have it lined up just right. And then it goes on and it'll actually even stay just like that. Win. Grab our DIY fixture plate. We have been using this thing a ton to the point where we're actually wearing wearing it down from refacing it a little more than I wish we had to, but that's, uh, you know, it's meant to be used. I splurged last night, folks, went to Harbor Freight, put this bad boy on layaway, only a few more payments, and I, sh she's mine. I'm joking. Okay, good. We know we're going to use a quarter 20 screw with a washer, and we'll throw that in this hole. Let's get it started, and then Strap clamp, half 13 hole right here. Now what you need to do is make sure your cam isn't going to crash. We should, we'll check that in a minute. That'll span that, okay. And then how do you keep this part square? Two, four, six block up against that edge. Grab our height gauges, 0.95. Push that against them. Like so. Let's check it with the Heimer, see how good we are. Who else caught that uh, had the damn part flipped upside down? All right, Heimer's on the back edge. Yeah, that's plenty good here. So uh, this is going to be plenty good, but let's just show you what the run out is. So I'll zero that in the Y and we'll go over. I mean, there's, you're like, no. Maybe four thousandths across six inches or something. Pl plenty good. Now, the really important thing, folks, is you've got this huge clamp sticking up. So you need to check your cam tool path and make sure you're not going to crash into it. All right, we used our point over here with the Heimer to find X, Y, Z, zero. See how she goes.
All right, that first cut was a little bit more aggressive than I would have liked. I should have increased the stock size to take that easier, but uh, you heard the chatter, but it should be fine. All right, so the uh, hog shear tool definitely generated more chatter than I thought it might in the fixture, which is kind of funny. I thought the fixture problems, or the problems here might have been when we held the part in the vise and we were hog shearing out the center. I was a little surprised that it chattered like that. I guess it has may have to do with the fact that the hog shear is a, or shear hog is a phenomenal tool, but you may have to have it, uh, it may induce some vibrations when the part didn't clamp down great. But here's the thing the part was fine we heard some noise and so forth but really nothing bad at all and this cleanup op here is just uh just that a little cleanup op although you probably could have gotten by without it so uh still a win but the takeaway is wouldn't have killed us to to have uh one more clamp hanging around there somewhere how close are we plenty of room one of the things i wanted to mention earlier too when we were on the dewalt is it is so important as a job shop to be able to get your raw material made into the workpiece size you need quickly and efficiently. I think people underestimate that. They think about the machine time or the programming time and the cam and they don't think about, maybe I can't afford to order 12 or 20 feet of a certain extrusion size just for a smaller job. So I've got to take material I've got on hand, which is money tied up in inventory and make it work for this job. And that means whether it's plasma cutting, DeWalt multi-saw, band saw, I don't care what, you gotta be able to get raw material ready for, to make money. I'm filming this actually on Wednesday because on Friday morning I am flying out to California. You'll be watching this, I'll have already been there, but going out to uh, Bar Z Industrial Summer YouTube event. There are a ton of great guys from YouTube that are gonna be there as sort of, I guess, co-hosts or whatever the term is, but really looking forward to meeting more folks face to face. Look at that, folks. Perfect. All right, we got two more ops to do, drill and drill. We're gonna use a flex arm for here. Let's bang through these. We need to drill a hole in here. I don't wanna stick it in the vise. It's gonna be, we're gonna run a room, so folks, don't overthink it. I had to laugh. I didn't mean for it to be, but this video is gonna be a giant uh, promotion for these uh, can't twist clamps and 246 blocks. But that's exactly what you do, folks. Don't overthink it. This part is not going on the space shuttle. Actually, frankly, you could do this incredibly accurately, even as is, but um, no need. And you know what, folks? I am actually just going to drill this by hand on the Tormach. I know we did the, the cam set up to create the plane, but sometimes I have to say it's just not worth it. Blasphemy, right? All, we're, all this does is tighten down that tool. So, centered, centered, 2,000, and I'll just jog it at 9%. Just come straight up. Number seven drill. Ooh, are we gonna run out of room? We might still be out of room. Oh, just barely. This is the G83 middle finger technique with page up, page down. We're through. Boom. Pull your parallels out because you don't want to you want to drill through this but not drill into them. And you know what? We're going to go crazy and not even spot this. through. I'll grab a letter F and that's going to be our clearance hole because we're only going to tap the bottom half or so and we may have to chase 
this letter F deeper depending on after we cut our split clamp, but that's no big deal. I'll just set my DRO to zero and just go down about half an inch, or about 0.4. Flex arm, tap. Just kidding. Cutting fluid first. I, I get excited to use this thing. <sighs> Seriously, folks, I love this thing. We'll do a video on it soon. Like so. <laughs> Again, using the can't twist clamps, and uh, we started with the DeWalt, we'll end with the DeWalt. Here comes the split clamp line. You know, seriously, these are really important, folks. This saw is dangerous, and that's why you keep your hands away from it. We're centered up, good enough. All right, Scout's Honor. I have not tried putting this on yet. See how she fits. All right, we super fly a piece of aluminum. See how she works. <laughs> now there's all kinds of reasons this may not be perfect. We may have deflection in the Z. Obviously we could have had the tool a lot closer to the spindle. You could make this bracket thicker. Uh, we're cutting right now though at 15 inches a minute and I'm going technically two thou deep, although it's clear that that's a lot deeper than that. But folks, this is flipping beautiful. Holy smokes. Look at this. Woo. I really, uh, I guess I didn't really think it would work this well. So this is awesome. What this means is when I uh, get my ducks in a row and build that pneumatic marking machine the right way with enough rigidity, this little pen is going to rock, man. This I hope you enjoyed that Wednesday widget, folks. I think this thing turned out great. Look at that, folks. Look how crisp that engraving is. You're going faster, you're using a less expensive tool. I think it's a real win, it was a fun project. I love working in Fusion 360 with the integrated CAD and CAM with the value, blah, blah, blah. Um, but seriously, folks, this was awesome. I am so tickled that this turned out like it did. Uh, with that, folks, I appreciate the thumbs up, commenting below, sharing this, liking it, all that good stuff. Take care, see you next Wednesday.